Okay, everybody. Good to see you today. Welcome back to Sports and Money with Ben Parker. We're talking about Richard Sherman today. Recently, over the past couple of weeks, he left from the Seattle Seahawks to go to the San Francisco 49ers. He was actually released. The Seattle Seahawks saved a ton of money by letting him go. You might say, well, why didn't they let some of the other players go? Why Richard Sherman? He really seemed to be the heart and soul of that team, especially that defense for the past seven seasons. His production had started to pale off a little bit. You were starting to see, I don't want to say signs of age, but you had seen that he just didn't seem to be the same player over the past two seasons that he was over the previous four or five seasons before that. So the Seahawks, even though I'm sure they hated to do it, decided to let Richard Sherman go. It's as much a financial reason as it is any other reason. I'm sure they would have loved to have keep, kept him on that defense, but they decided to let him go. What I really want to get into today, though, is the decision made by Richard Sherman to go and sign with the 49ers and the contract that he signed. Now, when you heard of him moving to the 49ers and the contract that he put together, he was criticized across the board for the numbers that he put together and the decision he made to only really negotiate with the 49ers. Basically, what Richard Sherman did was walk out of the Seahawks' door one day and walk right into the 49ers' door the next day and say, hey, I want to play for you guys. Now, let's take a look at the contract and then we'll get to look at some of the other fascinating stuff. For 2018, his salary cap hit will be $6.2 million. If the 49ers were to release him today, tomorrow, six months from now, his cap hit, uh, dead cap hit would be $3 million. Not a heavy hit, not something they're going to do, but it really cost them nothing to let him go. 2019, he stands to make $10.1 million against the cap. Also, if the 49ers want to release him at that point, it's $2 million. In 2020, it's almost the same thing. $10.1 million is what he'll be earning, basically. And then a one point, one point flat million dollars for the dead cap pit for the 49ers. Now, here's why he is really criticized. Here's why people across the board, NFL experts, agents, even a couple of former players, uh, other players have criticized him for this is because the only guaranteed money he's getting out of this is $3 million. That's it. He stands to make about $27 million off this whole contract. If he's healthy, if he's playing, $27 million. But the part people have really criticized is that he only got $3 million guaranteed. Now I want to talk about why they're right, and then I want to talk about why they're wrong. First of all, let's cover why they're right. They, they're correct to criticize him in that had he opened up himself to all of the other teams in the NFL, all 31 other teams besides the Seahawks, and teams have been able to bid on him, bid for his services, he would have had a number of people interested, and he would have been no doubt able to get a much higher amount of guaranteed money. Had he listened to probably the advice from his agent, he would have been able to get a much higher guaranteed amount, probably, I don't know, at least 15 mil maybe even $20 million, depending on who he really signed with at the end. All he got was $3 million. So his guarantee, his, his insurance against injury, basically, could have been way, way higher. There's no question about that. People who want to criticize him on those grounds, they're correct. He could have gotten a much higher guarantee than what he got had he not just walked into the 49ers office and said, I want to play for you guys. If he had put himself out there for all the other teams, he could have gotten a lot more guaranteed money, the kind of guaranteed money that most players of his caliber get. Most players get, period, even if they're not his caliber, they just get a certain amount of guaranteed money, percent of the contract. He didn't get that. And the reason he didn't get that was because all he did was go and negotiate with the 49ers. For once in a player's life, if he could say it wasn't about the money, this is the time that somebody could say it. And listen. Whether you hate Richard Sherman, love Richard Sherman, no matter how you feel about Richard Sherman of the past seven years, you have to say three things about him. He's a great player. Number two, he's very smart. And number three, he's very emotional. And Sherman knows what he's doing. When he made this decision, I think this is a largely emotional decision. I think he loved playing for the Seahawks. I think he loved playing for Pete Carroll. I think he loved the people in that defense that he was playing with. I think he really bought into the system, the area, the team, the coach. I think he bought into every, every bit of it. And I think he felt hurt and perhaps stabbed in the back might be a little bit too strong of a word, but no doubt, I think he felt like this was personal. And so when he went over to the 49ers, it was with the idea in mind of, 
I'm going to go to the biggest rival that our team has had over the past few years, and I'm going to get to play against the Seahawks twice uh, during the regular season, and I'm going to get to show them up and show them how wrong they are and how great a player I still am. Now, if he's healthy and if he's playing at a decent level, he still stands to make $27 million. That would average out to be nine a year. That's not a bad cap number for him to be making. I don't know that how much he would have pushed past that. Maybe he would have gotten 12 or 13 with some teams. His guaranteed money could have been a lot higher. I don't know that he could make a lot more money per year over a three or four year contract had he signed with another team. So this six and 10 of 10 are not bad numbers for him to be making. It's the guaranteed money that's where people were really criticizing him at. But for Richard Sherman, it really, truly, honestly wasn't about the money. And listen, I don't mind if athletes make uh, deals and make decisions based on money. That's perfectly fine. That's what most of us do. It's real life. It's real world. It's what the NFL teams and owners and coaches do. It's all about the money. In this case, for Sherman, it was not about the money. It was very clearly that he loved playing for the Seahawks. I think he felt, I don't, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but it's obvious that he still feels like he is a great player and he feels like he loved playing for the Seahawks and they just let him go and let him walk out the door, sent him packing, uh, just a pure financial decision on their part. But for him, it was a personal decision. He can say, well, it wasn't personal, it was just business. But when it's you, it's always personal. So for Richard Sherman, this was a very personal decision. I think out of all the players in the NFL, he may have been one of the most who bought into their team and, and their coach for the most. I think he really hated that he wasn't going to play for Big Carroll anymore, wasn't going to get to play for those, for those coaches and for those other players on that defense anymore. I think he's really, really going to miss that. But he's a very emotional guy. We've seen that all throughout his career, even though he's a very intellectual guy. When you hear him off talking, when you hear him uh, doing interviews, he's a very intellectual guy, but he's a very emotional guy. And for him, this was the decision to go straight to the Seahawks' biggest rival of the past few years. Even though the 49ers haven't been good the past two or three seasons, this was still the team that brought about the most hated games for the Seahawks over the course of seven seasons for Richard Sherman and that dooms uh, that that awesome defense, this was the team. So he just went over there, and he's going to try to show up to Seahawks in every way that he can that they were wrong to let him go. Now, I close with this. A lot of the flat that you're hearing about Richard Sherman not getting the right kind of deal is from people who the Players Union, I, they haven't really come out and said a lot about this, but some of the players, some of the people from the Players Union, they don't like a deal like this. This isn't good for business. This is Richard Sherman doing something that he wants to do for his own personal reasons, and that's fine. I totally back that. But this isn't good for business. If you're NFL players, you want every single player, especially every single veteran, to hit the market, get as big a contract as you can, set the standards and the levels as high as you can, and this doesn't do that. This does the complete opposite. Also, if you're an agent, if you're anybody's agent, not just Richard Sherman's agent, but if you are the agent of any player, you want every player out there to set the bar as high as you can. So you really don't like a contract like this. You really don't like players doing this because it's not good for business. It's not good for the money levels. It's not good for everybody else who wants to see a certain mark raised. They want to see a guy who's been in the league for seven years, who's about 30 years old, 29, 30 years old. They want to see him really set the bar high. So this isn't doing that. This is Richard Sherman saying... I love the Seahawks, but they stabbed me in the back, so now I'm going to show them up. This is a really nasty breakup for Richard Sherman, and he's going to try every chance he can to show the Seahawks that they were wrong. And this was his decision to make this kind of a deal. On the, on the overall numbers, it's not bad. It's not a bad deal. It's not as bad as people lampooned it for being. But on the guaranteed side, the $3 million, that's where it really wasn't their greatest of deals. Could he have done better? Could he have negotiated with a number of teams, got the 49ers to raise the amount of guaranteed money? Perhaps that's not the way Richard Sherman chose to do it. Will he look back on this in 10 years and wish he had done it different? That depends on how well he plays. Again, if he's healthy and if he's playing well, there are a number of bonuses that will kick in to make this a little bit higher. The guaranteed money gets to be a little bit more if he's still on the roster after certain dates. So this contract can get better with time. There are some incentives built in there, not major incentives, but there are some incentives built in there. It all depends on how well Richard Sherman plays 
and how healthy he is. If he, do, if he does get injured, if he blows out a knee or something, he's not going to get paid. He's just not going to get any kind of money, hardly at all. So that's the downside for Richard Sherman. But he's very confident. He's very competitive. He believes he's ready to get back out there on the field for the next three years and produce at a very high level. All right, that's it. This is a short video. Thank you so much for listening. As always, the numbers were provided by SpotTrack, the contract numbers. Go on there, look at the incentives, the bonus, and see what else they have to offer. Thank you for listening. This is Sports & Money. I'm your host, Benjamin Parker. Thank you. Bye.